Outside the Los Angeles Convention Center, where inside the world's automakers have gathered to reveal their latest products to literally thousands of attending press. It's the LA Auto Show. Over the next hour, we'll give you a sneak peek at the concepts and new cars being debuted here. From sports cars to SUVs, to the latest alternative fuel-powered vehicles, we've got you covered. So whether you're serious about cars or curious what will be rolling down tomorrow's roads, sit back, buckle up, and hang on as NBC Sports takes you on a ride around the LA Auto Show like you've never seen. Wake up from the voice in my head I'm terrified from all the things that it said Let's calm down like NBC Sports is proud to cover the LA Auto Show. Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Tor Dietrich. Well, the world's automakers have descended right here with close to 50 new car debuts. LA represents the country's first big stop for this auto show season. And we've got you covered with our NBC Sports Auto Show team, here to show you all the new metal and give you some perspective. Doug Browner, Nick Miles, and Kelly Stavis, who's ready to kick things off with a look into the future at some concept cars. Kelly? Well, toward this first concept not only looks like it came straight from the future, it looks like something a superhero would drive. It's a Mercedes-Benz AMG Vision Gran Turismo, and as the name implies, it actually comes straight out of a video game. It was developed for PlayStation's Gran Turismo racing game when car manufacturers were called upon to look forward into the future and create a car that reflects that vision. The AMG Vision Gran Turismo is essentially a full-scale model car, and as incredibly bold and futuristic as it looks, it still has some obvious Mercedes DNA. This super sports car will hit the virtual racetrack with 577 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque, thanks to an AMG V8 bi-turbo engine. And it weighs in at just over 3,050 pounds, thanks to the aluminum and carbon fiber components. Inside, Mercedes says this two-seater is inspired by a Formula One cockpit. Gamers will be able to drive the AMG Vision Gran Turismo and the rest of the visionary concepts through online updates on the Gran Turismo 6 video game. Nissan is giving us a glimpse into its future as it revitalizes its lineup. And if this Sentra concept is any indication, its future looks, well, sportier. This is the Sentra Nismo, and Nismo stands for Nissan Motorsport, so performance is in the name. It's also under the hood. The Sentra Nismo is powered by a 1.8 liter, 240 horsepower turbocharged engine. It has a race inspired exterior with enhanced aerodynamics, Nismo tuned suspension, steering and transmission, and a motorsport style cockpit. The interior has a number of Nismo inspired upgrades including Recaro Sportster front seats with custom black leather. The racing theme continues on the steering wheel with red leather wrapped at the 12 o'clock position and a matching shift knob. It's great to have halo cars like the GTR Nismo, but we know there's a lot of people out there that want fun, exciting, uh, affordable, fun to drive cars. The Sentra Nismo has a deep front fascia with lower LED lights, a wide grille with a lower front spoiler, and oversized fender flares along the sides. Nissan hasn't announced any plans to put the Sentra Nismo into production, but this concept looks ready to hit showroom floors. Subaru is celebrating the 25th anniversary of its legacy and style, showing off the coolest looking legacy yet. Fortunately, this one is just a concept, but it could give a clue as to what the next generation legacy holds, as Subaru says it's refocusing on its sedan models. We've never been really known for, for outstanding design, let's say, you know, but this car, definitely a step in that direction. It's going to be a very handsome car. You can see the car behind me. It looks absolutely fantastic. You'll notice right off the bat that it looks more coupe-like than the current Legacy. And the Legacy concept has a more distinguished front design featuring the new Subaru hexagonal grille with Hawkeye headlights. The Legacy concept has a custom ocean silver metallic paint scheme and flared wheel arches that cover the 21-inch wheels. So even if this was just purely an exercise in design, reaction has been strong. Build it exactly the way it is. Uh, <laughs> people like it, they like the concept a lot. The final version of the new legacy should be revealed sometime in 2014 with production to follow.
Now, our Nick Miles might think he's a race car driver, but instead of picking up a ride on a race car team, all he's managed to pick up is a load of speeding tickets. So what did you find to get yourself into trouble this time, Nick? Kelly, this is exactly what I don't need to stay out of trouble. In fact, I've just spent a week in the GTR, and this car exudes performance. Ever since man has had cars to drive, we've loved to speed and have performance. The very first car race took place in 1894 in France. It took the racers 33 and a half hours to go over 200 miles. That is only a speed of about 6 miles an hour. Today's modern sports cars can go over 30 times faster than those first cars. The new Nissan GTR Nismo continues to provide those of us who have a need for speed with a sports car fix. It will join the rest of the Nissan GTR family in the US in mid-2014. The Nissan GTR will feature a series of engine, suspension, exterior and interior enhancements, a carbon fiber trunk lid, side sills and bumpers, with a carbon fiber inspired spoiler, unique Nismo wheels, Nismo tuned suspension, high capacity turbos with engine enhancements that raise the output to 600 horsepower and Nissan calls it a Godzilla on steroids. Now being a good British guy, of course, I had to include Jaguar, and the silks came off this, the brand new Jaguar F-Type Coupe. LA is the perfect place to launch the F-Type Coupe. California is the biggest market for British sports cars, and so the perfect host for the next generation of Jaguars. We've already seen the Roadster version of the F-Type, and the new hardtop Coupe joins the Jaguar lineup. The R version of the F-Type boasts 550 horsepower with a big V8 engine. The front end is classic F-Type. The soft top has been replaced by a sweeping line that slides all the way down to the back bumper. You know, as designers, we, we wait a lifetime to be involved with a car like F-Type Coupe. We've been drawing cars like this since we were teenagers, so to be part of the team that's delivered this car is a real career highlight for us. The coupe will start about $65,000 and that's about $4,000 less than the roadster or convertible version. But if you want the R version of the car with the 5 litre engine, it'll cost you $99,000 starting. Audi is the hottest brand with the Gen X and Gen Y buyers and the new S3 is packed with tech. The new Audi S3 arrives later in 2014 and joins the Audi family of new A vehicles. The Audi A's were developed specifically with the US in mind. Powered by a 2-litre turbo, the S3 will get close to 300 horsepower. Packed with standard equipment like leather seats, rain-sensing wipers and Bluetooth, the tech, along with sports driving and handling, are the big attractions for the S3. The thinnest infotainment screen in the industry pops out of the dash. And this car has the world's first application of G4 LTE data communication systems. The first time that this has been used in a vehicle. Now your Wi-Fi hotspot with eight devices will be faster than any competitor. On screen, Audi will use the NVIDIA graphics processing unit. That is the same system used by gamers, tablets and in high-end smartphones. And the Audi A3 starts at $29,900 and will be in showrooms very, very soon. When our coverage of the auto show continues, I'll show you some new cars, I'll show you some concepts, and I'll show you what a very, very smoky burnout looks like in an SRT Viper. Doug? I'm Doug Browner. We're certainly all wired to our smartphones, but increasingly to our cars as well. But how much is too much? We talk about car connectivity, plus automotive seating. Sure, it's comfortable, but it's about to go pretty high tech. We explore all that and more as NBC Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show continues. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2015 Chevrolet Colorado. Welcome back to NBC Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show. Luxury automakers are rapidly expanding their SUV lineup and for good reason, they sell. And BMW, well, they've got the country's largest car export with the X5. Well, BMW is looking to expand their SUV lineup with the introduction of the X4 concept design study. 
Now BMW actually refers to the X4 concept as a SUC for Sports Utility Coupe, referring to its sloped rear in the same vein as their X6. BMW tells me the X4 concept interior and power plant will most likely be very close to, if not the same, as the X3 it spawned from. Interestingly, the X4 concept press release has the word contour five times to stress the car's unique angles, surfaces, and lines. Realize the X4 concept will be the fifth SUV for BMW when it's built in its Spartanburg, South Carolina plant as a 2015 model. And BMW isn't the only luxury brand looking to expand its compact SUV segment. Kelly, what did you find? No, it's not, Tor. We got a first look at Lincoln's new small utility vehicle, the MKC, back in Detroit, where it was introduced as a concept. Now we're seeing it in true production form, and to be honest, it really hasn't changed that much. Perhaps the biggest styling feature of the MKC is the grill, which is the new face of Lincoln and will soon be seen on the Navigator as well. However, Lincoln is most proud of its new massive lift gate, which wraps around the rear of the vehicle, reaching the sides. The MKC is powered by a 2.3-liter four-cylinder EcoBoost Turbo with 275 horsepower, and its features list reads just like a luxury vehicle should. Even though this small SUV should be easy enough to park on its own, it has a self-park feature to help with parallel parking and a park-out feature to guide you out of tight spots. And get this, the MKC has an approach detection system illuminating the Lincoln logo on the ground next to the front doors, almost as a welcome mat. The MKC is due in showrooms this summer, starting at about $34,000. Porsche had one of the most anticipated debuts at this year's show. No, it wasn't their latest supercar, it was something much more practical, a compact SUV called the Macan. When the Cayenne SUV was introduced 10 years ago, it quickly became the brand's top seller. Now it, along with the Panamera sedan, make up the majority of Porsche's sales. So why not join the fastest growing segment, compact SUVs? Porsche says the Macan retains all the sporty DNA you'd expect in a Porsche. Maximum acceleration and braking, big power, extreme agility, and precision steering. And you'll notice at first glance that the Macan has a lot of the same design features as other Porsche models that have been enhanced to fit this compact SUV. And as fun as the Macan sounds on the road, it's plenty capable off-road too. The 2015 Macan is expected to hit showrooms in spring of 2014, with prices ranging from $52,000 to $62,000. Volvo has seen a lot of changes in recent times, most notably a change in ownership. Volvo says that's just the tip of the iceberg. They'll begin introducing, or rather reintroducing, vehicles to their lineup, starting with the V60 sports wagon. This car has had success in Europe for a few years now, and Volvo felt it was the right time to bring it to the U.S. The V60R design is even sportier with a firmer chassis which gives a better road handling ride along with Volvo's 325 horsepower V6 engine and all-wheel drive. Eventually, all V60s will come with Volvo's new Drive E engine, a twin turbocharged four-cylinder, but for now, that's only available on front-wheel drive models. Adding the V60 wagon to the Volvo lineup shows the company's eagerness to get back to its roots. We kind of strayed away from who we are we're about safety, we own safety, we're about families. No pricing has been announced yet. All right, we've just seen some luxury cars that will actually be in showrooms in the near future. But our Doug Browner is rarely in touch with reality, which is why we send him to go check out some unreal concept cars. Well, Kelly, you're absolutely right, because we're looking at concept SUVs. And here at the Infinity booth, the all new Q30 concept pretty awesome and also pretty consistent with what Infinity says could be their look for just about all of their cars. And if that's the case, we could easily call the look of Infinity's future to be beautifully flowing. The lines on the Q30 concept are hard to miss and even harder not to be impressed by. The Q30 could come with a front or all-wheel drive option, but make no mistake, Infinity wants to shake up this segment of the market by breaking all of the rules. And we think this model very much will in a really good way. Expected to go on sale early in 2015, the Q30 also expected to be a huge hit with younger car buyers and that's just perfect for this company. A company that has built this concept simply for premium minded younger buyers who Infinity thinks are willing to look more at an upscale car that can break out of the pack with both luxury and style. Oh, and judging by the reaction of those here, well, this thing could be a huge hit. With 
with super high-end luxury appointments inside for the occupants that will enjoy the four bucket seats, the CX-17 will deliver all of the style you'd expect. Loads of fine leather, brushed aluminum, secure in-car Wi-Fi, touchscreen infotainment. Clearly, Jaguar has no history of producing SUVs, but we recognize the popularity of this type of vehicle in the global marketplace. We predict that if Jag brings this fresh sport ute to the market, it could deliver a heck of a response from folks who would love to own a Jag SUV. And over at Ford, well, things continue to roll along pretty darn smoothly. And one of the reasons for that is this, the Ford Edge concept. It is certainly a look at where Ford is headed in the near future. The Edge concept, packed with high tech, something that the company is betting a lot of us will soon be demanding in our new cars. The Edge concept boasting not just collision avoidance technology, but features a remote parking function. That's right, the Edge will both park itself in and out and do it automatically. Cool. Inside seating for five, simply put, Ford is promising that this Edge will be the most innovative utility in the segment. And one of the bigger points is that concepts these days, unlike from previous generations, they're more likely than ever to come to market quickly, which means the Edge that you see here might be in a showroom near you sometime very soon. Stick around, we have a lot more coming up, including some over-the-top luxury SUVs and why the seats that are in your car could be old school within the very near future. Seating goes high tech. You're watching the LA Auto Show on the NBC Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mercedes-Benz AMG Vision Gran Turismo. Coverage of the LA Auto Show continues on NBC Sports. Now Mercedes is introducing a number of high performance cars here in LA. This, the AMG S65. Are you ready for this? A V12 that churns out some 621 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Inside, take a look. Uber Mercedes Luxury. Now for more on luxury cars found here at the show, our Kelly Stavis. Kelly? Toward the big news here at Maserati is a smaller car. The Italian automaker is marking its 100th anniversary with the introduction of this, the Ghibli. And even though it's now the smallest sedan in Maserati's lineup, the company's CEO assures us it has all the makings of a true luxury car. It's 100% Maserati. It's beautiful. It's all leather and wood engines co-developed between the Maserati powertrain team and the Ferrari powertrain team produced in the wonderful facility in Ferrari. Combined with an eight-speed automatic gearbox, you can have it four by four, and it's just fantastic. Meant to compete with the likes of the Mercedes-Benz CLS and the Audi A7, Maserati describes the Ghibli as a coupe with four doors. Maserati also plans to unveil an SUV for 2015, but the Ghibli is already on sale, and with a price tag of $65,000, it's as entry-level as Maserati gets. Acura's new RLX Sport Hybrid SH all-wheel drive sedan seems to be the car that has it all. It's got the power of a V8 with 377 horsepower, the fuel economy of a four-cylinder at 32 miles per gallon highway, and the handling of a sports car with Acura's super handling all-wheel drive system. The reality is this car is the first to deploy Acura's new three-motor hybrid powertrain technology. The system combines a highly efficient, direct-injected V6 engine with an all-new 7-speed dual-clutch transmission with built-in electric motor. It's got a longer wheelbase than competing mid-luxury sedans, giving the RLX Sport Hybrid full-size interior space. And once inside, you'll find an 8-inch color touchscreen, Acura's heads-up display, and a Corel sound system with 14 speakers. The RLX Sports Hybrid SH all-wheel drive will be available this spring at a price point of about $60,000.
Here in LA, Range Rovers are so popular that a lot of people think of them as the cool soccer mom ride. Well, if that's true, then this ride is for the baddest mom on the block. It's the Range Rover Autobiography Black Edition. It's the pinnacle of the Range Rover lineup and the pinnacle of luxury. It's almost like a limo SUV, and if you pull up in front of the school with this, the whole class will want to ride. Problem is, you'll want to be the one riding in the back. That's because this is a Range Rover L, the longer wheelbase Range Rover, and it really is a true passenger vehicle. It's got over seven inches more legroom in the back, the rear seats recline and come equipped with a massage unit. Plus, the rear center consoles have electronically deployed tables with USB ports and 10 inch rear screens. And for a night on the town, there's even a beverage cooler and room for a couple of champagne flutes. This bad boy's got a supercharged 5 liter V8 power plant with 510 horsepower. It gets from 0 to 60 in just a fraction over 5 seconds. Your kids will never be late to soccer practice again. But with a price tag at just under $200,000, personally, I wouldn't let a kid near this car. Just 100 units will be made for the 2014 model year and those will be available this spring. Now coming up, could we soon be Facebooking on our heads up display or Skyping on the open road? Doug Browner shows us how our cars are becoming more and more connected. But first, we'll show you the latest vehicles with alternative fuels. Today, we want to share Honda FC EV concept. Welcome back to NBC Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show. Here in LA, alternative fuel vehicles are charged up and ready to go. This is Honda's all new FC EV, and it's a concept. It's a vision of the Clarity, its current fuel cell car. But you can plainly see by the futuristic styling, this concept is not ready to hit the streets. But Honda did want to show how styling and efficiency, such as the aerodynamics, can come together. Inside, Honda promises more room and a fifth seat in the rear, as Honda has reduced the fuel stack by a full two thirds. Now the entire powertrain is under the hood. Now with more on alternative fuel powered cars, here's Nick Miles. Nick? Well, right tour, this may look like a regular Hyundai Tucson that's powered by gasoline, but in fact, it's powered by electricity provided by hydrogen, also known as a fuel cell car. When the hydrogen engine was first built, Thomas Jefferson was president and Napoleon was at war with Russia. The year was 1807, but it took over 200 years to develop the hydrogen engine into an efficient propulsion system that can be used in the modern car. The fuel cell conversion allows hydrogen to react with oxygen to produce electricity that powers an electric motor in a vehicle. The only emission is water, and this system allows the Tucson to go 300 miles between refills. Hyundai tell us that the Tucson fuel cell will be leased to select customers for $499 a month, which will include all the fuel that you need and all the required maintenance. To give potential buyers the opportunity to try the new Hyundai Tucson fuel cell, Enterprise Rent-A-Car will offer the vehicle as a choice to some of its customers. But the lease and rental of this alternative fueled CUV will start in selected areas of Los Angeles only. But at the LA show, BMW took the their fuel efficiency plans a step further. The BMW i8 looks like a concept car, but it is a production vehicle and will be in stores by summer 2014. The new i8 is the world's first plug-in hybrid 2 plus 2 supercar. The i8, like the i3, will be constructed primarily of carbon fiber. The exterior styling features an athletic design. The vehicle operates with extremely low fuel consumption of 94 miles a gallon. The i8 is capable of accelerating from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 4.4 seconds with an electronically governed top speed of 155 miles an hour. The i8 comes well equipped with extensive standard equipment, including navigation system, fully digital instrument display, BMW iDrive with freestanding control display, leather seats, four colors, and interior equipment package choices. We know electric car sales have been slow and the technology is expensive to develop. So will BMW lose money on the i8? 
Is the project financially viable? Another German manufacturer, Audi, pulled the silks off their A3 Sportsback e-tron gasoline electric plug-in hybrid as part of the new family of premium compact cars. The A3 e-tron demonstrates what can be achieved with parallel plug-in technology. This is just a practical step towards electrification driving, which migrates the range anxiety concerns associated with most full battery electric cars. Given the typical plug-in customer's preference to drive in EV mode as much as possible, Audi will include a wall box charger as standard equipment. This charger can also be removed to provide mobile charging from any 110 or 220 volt power source. And you can recharge your A3 e-tron at any regular charging station. And the Audi A3 e-tron goes on sale in the next 18 months. Now, Doug, I know you're at the Connected Car Expo and I was going to hand it over to you, but instead I think I'll just send you this text. Uh, uh, okay, buddy boy, I'm, st I'm hearing you as you post your toss over to me via Facebook, which I'm dialed into right here, and I receive a text to voice so I can, well, of course, literally hear you. That is cool. And it's just one of the technologies that here over at the Connected Car Expo that they're really exploring the next generation of. But if you thought, well, that this was just about being able to post or read posts on Facebook while you're driving, there is that, plus a whole lot more. Call it the perfect confluence between cars and tech. The Connected Car Expo, now a big part of the LA Auto Show, it's where industry meets, well, automakers for the purpose of deciding what is the next generation of onboard connectivity when it comes to your car. And if you thought satellite radio was a big deal, just wait. Well, you'll interact the same way. The way we want people to interact with their vehicle is with their eyes on the road and their hands on the wheel. Uh, but we want the depths of services to be a little bit more feature rich. We want people to be able to really interact through email, through social media, however they're comfortable interacting while they're behind the wheel, we want them to be able to do that which means if you get an email, it gets read to you through the radio speakers. If you want to send an email or post something to Facebook, all you need to do is talk out loud. And the way it works is really simple. When I have my phone and I'm driving, well, the car is suddenly all about me and all about my world. But if my wife gets in with her phone, well, of course, the car's now all about her. That is just plain cool and custom. So not restricting, not limiting innovation. Of course, it has to happen in, a, in, a safe, in safe boundaries because we still do it within cars. We would still would like to use applications in the cars, so there's certain regulation you need to follow. But otherwise, you should not restrict app developers and consumers more than what is really necessary. The telecom companies say that ultimately, they'll help with the technology, but it's the driver who's going to make the big difference between being distracted, being safe, and, well, being dangerous. So Tor, easy to see a lot of cool stuff coming soon to a dashboard near you. But I do want to point out that every automaker and every telecom company that I spoke to said that their first goal is to avoid any addition to distracted driving issues and that we as drivers also need to partner in that and always be sure that we're being as safe as we can while we're on the road. Back to you. Thanks, Doug. And to show you how far things have come, check out the 2014 Hyundai Elantras. Coupe, GT, and four-door. These cars, well, they're connected. This Elantra includes Blue Link that automatically connects you to a help center if the car is in an accident. Updated for 2014, Hyundai has added Pandora Radio as an option. In all, Hyundai has made some 75 enhancements to the Elantra, including a new 173 horsepower GDI engine. That's 25 more horses than its predecessor, yet it returns up to 35 MPG on the highway. Inside, Hyundai has added interior sound dampening for a quieter ride. The Elantra was already a great product, but these mid-model changes are worth noting. And the Elantra is a good example of how, when shopping for your next car, make sure you know the timing and what will be addressed in the model update. It could be significant, as it is here. We'll have more from the LA Auto Show, including some hip new coupes and some fun four-doors. the new GTR Nismo. Here we go. What do you think, Hussein? 
Oh, yeah. Welcome back to NBC Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show. Now, BMW has a very busy show here in LA, as one of its stars is actually an engine. It's their new diesel that's dropped into this, their 535D. Amazingly, the 535D gets better mileage at up to 38 miles on the highway than any BMW gas power product. And performance is not lost, as the 535D scampers 0 to 60 in a respectable six seconds with its eight-speed transmission. Inside, the latest tech from the BMW Wizards, including a touchpad on top of the controller so you can finger write your destination or a friend's name when making a call. Look for the BMW 535D making its way into showrooms now, starting at just under $60,000. Now our Kelly Staffis is out on the floor and she says she found some all-wheel drive cars that are also fun to drive. Right, Kelly? Yeah, Tor, not only are these cars a lot of fun to drive, but they're also really affordable, giving buyers a lot of bang for the buck. So we start here at Subaru, where the 2015 WRX just made its world debut, and it promises to be the more powerful, better handling version of the brand's current high performance model. This WRX is all new from its 17 inch wheels on up. It sits on a new platform, 40% stiffer and more agile than the current model. It's powered by a new 268 horsepower, two liter direct direct injection turbo boxer engine mated with a new standard six-speed manual transmission. And not only do you get more power and a better handling car, the new WRX is also more fuel efficient. One of the, the biggest things we've got coming out though is a, is a new CVT transmission on this car. It's called Sport Linear Tronic. People don't think of sporting and CVTs in the same breath. This car will change your mind. At the same time, the interior has been upgraded. The cabin feels roomier and more comfortable with more refined materials and better technologies. For the first time, a Harman Kardon premium audio system is offered on the WRX. Pricing hasn't yet been announced, but the 2015 WRX should start near the $25,000 mark when it hits dealerships in spring. Nissan added a third model to its Juke lineup, the Nismo RS, which takes the existing Nismo model to the next level. Or as Nissan puts it, it gives you more. People love the Juke Nismo and, and said this is really fun to drive, but, but can we have more please? So I'm happy to say we're back and we're delivering more. More power to the tune of 214 horsepower on front wheel drive models and 211 horsepower on all wheel drive Jukes. Better handling thanks to suspension upgrades and chassis reinforcements and exclusive equipment like Recaro seats and paddle shifters. The Juke Nismo RS has a 37% improvement in aerodynamic performance as well, a result of a modified front fascia and grille which better control airflow to the engine. Only one options package is available on the Juke Nismo RS, the navigation package, but it comes with a touchscreen, 3D map views, and voice recognition. Like I said, a lot of bang for the buck, especially considering this ride starts at under $30,000. Now, small and sexy are all the rage at this year's show, which is why our Nick Miles fits in perfectly here in LA. Nick? Well, Kelly, it's not hard to be sexy in this. It's the BMW 4 Series convertible, and it made its world debut right here in LA. It was one of the 22 world debuts of this year's LA International Auto Show, and BMW are banking that the new 4 Series convertible will be a huge hit for car buyers who are looking for a luxury performance coupe with a little more space and a retractable roof. The 4 Series convertible is keen to display its family ties with the car it is replacing, the BMW 3 Series convertible, but the 4 has a more aggressive stance and a bigger footprint than its predecessor. BMW has engaged some advanced technologies in the trunk area. It sports this brand new uh, convenience loading function. And what it does is basically that when the roof is down in the trunk, just at the touch of one button on the trunk lid, the entire rear deck will go up, providing you with a very large opening so that you can access your trunk and conveniently easily load and unload your cargo. And the roof can be deployed and retracted while the vehicle is in motion up to 11 miles an hour. Mini debuts the new Mini Hardtop at the LA show, and it's not so mini anymore. It has grown 4.5 inches in some areas and gets 3 cubic feet of cargo space. 
but it's the tech that is significantly upgraded. A new available extended heads-up display, camera-based active cruise control, along with collision and pedestrian warning systems. A new three-cylinder engine will give the Mini improved fuel economy, but Mini fans don't worry. The car company assures us that the latest birth of this British baby will maintain its go-kart handling characteristics. The new Mini will arrive on US shores within 2014. Now for those that love tuna cars, the new Hyundai Veloster Turbo R-Spec 1.6 litre engine is aftermarket tunable. This refresh of the Veloster is built to be fast and designed to handle well. This is only the fourth R-Spec that Hyundai have ever made and has the unique R-Spec suspension and steering. The car comes with a six-speed transmission and on the insides the seats have red bolstering with black cloth inserts R-Spec logos on the floor mats and badging in key areas. The new 2014 Hyundai Veloster Turbo R-Spec is in showrooms as we speak and starts at under $22,000. Tor? Here in LA, Chevy is introducing their all-new midsize truck, the Colorado. Chevy has been out of the midsize truck market, so the Colorado is an important entry back into the segment, as LA is the largest market in the US for midsize trucks. Chevy says this truck will launch with gas engines, but buyers can expect a diesel option in 2015. Inside, Chevy's MyLink for connectivity, respectful legroom in the rear. The truck bed offers multiple options for carrying bikes or other gear. Look for the 2015 Chevrolet Colorado this fall. Pricing should be competitive to the Toyota Tacoma, which is Chevy's biggest competitor in the segment. Coming up, a ride in the new SRT Viper and more new cars as NBC Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show continues. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new addition to our family, the F-Type Coupe. Now, when you come to the auto show, you got to check out the new sports cars, right? One of the most popular, the 2014 SRT Viper, with more than 600 whoa, horses under whoa, the... Whoa, 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 wait a second, Tor. Have you actually driven this car? Not yet. Let me tell you, I've driven this car, and it's absolutely smoking. I had lots of fun in the Viper, and anyone looks good behind the wheel of a Viper, even me. It has been that way since the first Viper was introduced in 1992. The very first Viper was called the RT10. It had 400 horsepower, and it was quite a revolutionary car. The revolution has continued all the way through the fifth generation of Viper. Today it has 640 horsepower, and that's four times the power of the average family car. And just in time for the LA Auto Show, SRT introduced the Viper TA, or Time Attack. This is a pure race car that is made to be a daily driver and to be driven on the racetrack without any modifications. And we burned through some rubber just seeing how it performed. One minute you could be headed home from work, the next you could be taking a track straight at 170 miles an hour. In the past the Viper has been a little hard to drive. It was great on the straightaway, but you had to slow down to take the corners. This fifth generation is a game changer, and the Time Attack Viper puts the fan in fantastic. About 20% of our owners uh, love to go to the track and actually uh, pretend they're a race car driver. So this car, you could literally drive it from your house to the track, do some incredible world-class lap times, and then drive it. Everything on the car has been modified to make the vehicle fast and furious. Special suspension, Brembo brakes that still work even when they get white hot, and a special aero package that helps keep the car on the ground when it reaches speeds of around 200 miles an hour. For cars this fast or capable of 206 miles per hour, 
there's always this, this balance of drag. You don't want too much drag because you want speed and efficiency, but you want just enough to make the car feel planted. On the inside, SRT have given the Viper TA very distinctive looks with standard premium ballistic racing seats from Sabelle. If you want, you can fit the car with a six-point race seat belt and the orange badging just rounds off the interior to perfection. So what does any wannabe race car driver want to do in a Viper? The real answer is very smoky burnouts. I had to take this opportunity to show it to you again. This all-American supercar, the SRT Viper Time Attack, is made in Detroit by hand and you'll need about $120,000 to add it to your garage. When our NBC Sports coverage of the LA International Auto Show returns, there's one seat in the car that's occupied 100% of the time. That's right, the driver's seat. And Doug Brown is going to tell us about the latest innovations for car seats. That and more when we return. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present to you the all-new 2015 K900. Welcome back to NBC Sports coverage of the LA Auto Show. Now, normally when you think of luxury motoring, you think of BMW or Mercedes. Well, how about Kia? That's right, Kia. The brand is looking to enter the luxury market with this, the K900. In 20 short years, they're firmly planted here in the U.S. And the K900, well, that just seems to be a natural extension of where the brand needs to go as current owners look to trade in their current Kias. It's all designed to convince you that you bought into German luxury, but at half the price. Inside, pure opulence that you'd expect from top luxury brands. Lexicon Audio with 17 speakers, available 16-way power adjustable seats with power lumbar and even power headrests. Under the hood, your choice of a V6 with 311 horses or 420 with the V8. Kia expects the K900 to start at under $50,000 when it comes out next spring as a 2015 model. Ooh, these seats are comfortable. But Doug, you're telling me that it's not just about comfort with seats, it's about high tech. All right, I'll concede, Tor. You obviously have the more luxurious seat in the house. I'm in the back of a Mini Cooper S convertible. I'll be honest, not that bad for a small car. But when it comes to automotive seating, well, what we think we know about it, well, we might want to think again. Because quite simply, seats are changing. Now, it really wasn't that long ago that if the seat in your car slid back and forth and maybe even reclined a bit, well, you probably thought that that was more than enough. Um, well, not so much. And that's because the guys who do nothing but think about such things all day long, well, let's call them, say, seatologists. Okay, I made that up. But these guys are ready to bring you to the place where your rump meets your ride and bring that to a whole new level. We really like to think of the seat as the ultimate wearable device. You know, it, it, it is an amazing tool, not only to provide comfort, uh, but also to do a lot of amazing things in the future, like, you know, even keeping track of biometrics and health. Okay, okay, stop right there. Biometrics? Uh, what our good friend is talking about, that in the very near future, they can create seating that can do a whole bunch of things, including measuring your heart rate. Uh, that might be helpful on those first dates at a drive-in movie. Plus, think about a seat more seriously that could accurately measure blood pressure in real time and even take a blood sugar measurement. That's serious business. But what has to be some of the coolest technology exists here in how we heat and cool the driver. Because we do just that. Instead of doing what we do now, which is to heat or cool the air, through the surfaces that the driver touches, they are, well, climate controlled. It's sort of like being under a blanket in a cold room. You're warm, but the air is cold. Oh, and how about some gesture recognition? Take your hand, just slide it right under here, and oh, is that the glove box opening? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So get excited. It's easy to see that booty brilliance is coming soon. And ultimately, as are most things automotive, the rationale behind all this progress will be simple to just create a better overall experience for the driver when they sit behind the wheel. 
And to give you an example of just how close we are to seeing that over-the-top high-tech seating, you need to only look at this new Subaru Legacy concept. The seats in this thing, so high-end. Well, I asked Subaru Tour if I could get a little tush time, you know, in the concept. <laughs> they politely said, there is absolutely no way we're letting you anywhere near this car. Tour will toss it back to you. And joining me now is Jack Nerad, Editorial Director over at Kelly Blue Book. Jack, a lot of new entries in the compact luxury SUV segment. Absolutely, and you can understand why. It's a very, very hot segment. In fact, I think it's the hottest segment in the American car market right now. So a lot of manufacturers are diving in. Lincoln, MKC, your thoughts? I think this is going to be a big score for them. I think they're in the right place. This is the right vehicle. It's a good looking vehicle. And I think it's going to do well for them. And then you have the X4. Great brand behind that. And a lot of people are now used to uh, crossover vehicles from BMW. So I think this that's going to score very well. Yeah, and you can't forget the Macan. The Macan, Porsche going with a compact SUV. It kind of fundamentally is a change for the Porsche brand. They've had SUVs before, but a compact SUV, that's a question. Porsche tells me with the Macan, they will start selling more four doors than two doors. Yeah, I mean, that's a kind of a fundamental change in the Porsche brand, right? Those of us who are old enough recognize Porsche as a sports car company. That's what they made, two doors that were sports cars. And now the fact that they're selling passenger cars kind of fundamentally changes them. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the Jaguar F-Type, incredible car. Absolutely, and we're, we're looking at the coupe here. And of course the XKE, the XK Coupe, was the one that was, you know, the sexy car of the 1960s. So they're trying to follow that up, and this is a very good looking coupe. We also saw a, a good looking product from Subi with their WRX. Subaru has been on a roll, and a lot of people are, are kind of catching on that there's a lot of great product from Subaru, but the WRX is kind of their flagship performance vehicle, and they've really hit a home run with this one, I think, this time around. Oh, absolutely. Well, thanks, Jack. That's it for us. For our entire NBC Sports team, Doug Browner, Nick Miles, Kelly Stavis, I'm Tor Dietrich. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the road.